Hello everyone, welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Global Space Program 1.12. Today NASA made their choice for the Artemis 5 mission, the second lunar lander, and they have chosen the Blue Origin lander, which is not this. A Blue Origin plus what I'll call a national team of Lockheed and many other contractors. But this was the old lander that Blue Origin had, and they have shuffled it around quite a lot, and it looks a lot better. <laughs> it's, it's better than this. Uh, this was the old model, and the old model, uh, my grievances with the old model are pretty clear. First of all, it had the cabin on the top requiring a very large lander to get down to the ground. Uh, second, it had this hypergolic stage, MMH Mon 3, and that after the hydrogen oxygen stage here, where I thought it wasn't necessary, it should have been like that. They wanted this stage because it was a storable fuel stage, I think. It was considered more reliable, and therefore NASA would be happier with it. But really, you can't refuel this thing on the surface of the moon, so it's better to just go hydrolox, and I think that's what they've done. So they've made this, and then they've made it all bigger. The cabin is much bigger. The hydrogen and oxygen tanks are much bigger. Now, uh, this is only 17 tons, but because of the bigger cabin, they need bigger tanks, and it's grown to about 45 tons altogether. That requires them to launch it uh, only partly fueled or unfueled first, and then they'll have refueling missions for it to top it off. So that's inconvenient, but then again, their main competitor, Lunar Starship, is doing the same thing anyway, so they might as well, and it'll take two refueling missions to top it off. So it's not like this. And in particular, uh, <laughs> it's not like this at all. Uh, they've, they've got the tanks on top of the cabin so that the people can get out a lot easier and it's not such a big landing, uh, such a big ladder or anything like that. So it's like that and then the legs are, I'll have to model it all. I'll have to model it all. So I get to throw away this model. This is now completely useless. All these meticulously made parts of the previous notion, completely pointless. And who knows with the new idea how that's going to go or whether they're going to change stuff up again. But I want to take this opportunity to remind everybody that I have my own Lunar Lander proposal. I was so annoyed with the three proposals that I made my own. And that was the Kumo. I often make things and only end up using them once. Uh, and so this is just my chance to pull it out again so that you can see it. And it had a larger cabin, just like I wanted, and actually a little bit more like the Lunar Lander proposal that they have now. And what they have is the hydrogen and oxygen tanks on top, but I had them alongside because when I land on the moon, I tend to tip over, frankly speaking. So I didn't want to have them on, uh, I didn't want to have a tall lander. And this is a lander that is specially designed for me not to tip over. But it has other features, and you can tell it's, um, it seems fairly sturdy. Though I could have made more ground clearance on this. But uh, it does have higher mounted engines, you see here. They're mounted like that so that they don't blow up too much dust. Well, at least they're a little bit higher up than if we tried to put them on the bottom. But the feature of this, the main feature, is that because it's hydrogen and oxygen, you can refuel it on the surface. And if you do have refueling capabilities on the surface of the moon, this will be sufficient to do a landing and get back to Lunar Gateway. It will not need to have any other help. So if you can refuel it, it can do both things. If you can't refuel it on the surface, you need this expansion pack. Uh, there we go. Uh, it's carefully balanced because you have to make sure that the center of thrust is, you know, within the engines. But now with the expansion pack, you see we have the 4,768 meters per second. Uh, you can see it's 30, let's say 34 tons. So it's ver coming very close to the uh, Blue Origin lander. Uh, that one's a little bit heavier. Uh, probably because I was a little bit optimistic here, maybe. I don't know. But my dry mass is 11.5 tons. Theirs is apparently 17. But they've got bigger radiators because they have to refuel theirs. So they have to store the hydrogen for longer. 
uh, this wasn't meant to be um, steadily refueled on multiple flights. What you do is you have this thing and then an expansion pack, maybe two launches, or you could probably launch the whole thing on one launch of SLS or probably Starship. Uh, I don't know if it'll fit in Starship, that's a little bit complicated. Uh, but multiple vehicles could launch this uh, all together. And this drops off during the mission and it just lands like that. So there's a drop tank. And the drop tank is balanced so that these are the oxygen tanks in the back. They're actually just pill shaped tanks. I just wrapped the. There's actually three of these tanks back here. And then there's three of those tanks down here. It's just that the uh, insulation is wrapped around all of them. So it works like that. So, yeah, uh, it's a drop tank, so you get rid of it before landing. Uh, so it's this part's expendable, and this part is reusable. Uh, obviously, this is the much more expensive part. If you want to refuel it to use it again, you'll just bring one more of these and also then top it off with the additional fuel. So the total fuel module will be this plus some additional fuel that you use to top it off. So that's the idea. And with that all said, I'll show you the video of me testing it out and I'll comment during that. So this is just a quick re-edit of a lunar landing test I did a while back when originally testing this. And you'll notice that there's more Delta V being read down there, about 5,200. And that's because in the VAB, I forgot to put a decoupler between the drop tanks and the main body of it. I did have a cabin for it. And you can see the Kerbal floating up there. And that's because the cabin is sized for humans. It is actually the cabin that I no normally have in the Shinkansen space plane and other space planes as well. So the, this cabin was sized around that. And we came down from a sort of lunar gateway-ish trajectory. We had a very high orbit and the lander first had to bring itself down to a lower orbit and then begin descent. So this is just getting into low lunar orbit in preparation for descent, as you can see there. Uh, though, of course, they might be landing at the pole. Delta V wise, it's not gonna make too much of a difference. And here we are beginning descent and eventually we have to, of course, drop the drop tanks. And that comes about here-ish. There they go. And here we have final touchdown in the crater with fairly serious slopes around. So I was glad to have this wide base to work with. Just in case, though, some of those slopes would not be good for this either especially in Kerbal Space Program. And then of course we have to ascend again. We have to get back into orbit and demonstrate that we have enough Delta V to potentially get back to Lunar Gateway as well. So that's the Kumo Lunar Landing System in a nutshell. And basically the Blue Origin slash national team proposal that won out this time around is a lot closer to the Kumo Lander than their original proposal was, so that makes me happy in a way. It's not quite a Kumo Lander, but at least it's sort of closer. I do consider it one of my better designs, and it makes sense. It still works pretty optimally for its purpose, as far as being a small lunar lander without carrying much cargo is concerned. So with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.